Hey guys, we're looking at the Bulls Copperhead Evo AM1 750, and the 750 it denotes the highest capacity battery pack from Bosch, the Power Tube 750 AM All Mountain. It's got 150 millimeters travel up front and in the rear. This is pretty heavy duty. This thing is designed to make some steep descents and handle bigger logs and boulders and such. What's really special about it is that it's it's actually a mullet setup, meaning it has a larger front reel. This is 29er, and in the rear, it's smaller, 27.5. And so that's gonna give you a lower attack angle, some confidence and stability handling those bigger obstacles, a little bit more ground clearance, but that smaller wheel in the rear, it's gonna be a bit more playful and you'll have a bit more precision. So they're trying to combine the best of both worlds, and this is a pretty popular setup. A lot of people will take their 27.5, just standard setup, and they'll convert to a mullet, uh, but then they have to potentially change the suspension fork and make sure that the geometry is all set up. So to have a bike that like straight out of the box is set up this way, is really unique and special. And I'm a big fan of the tires that they chose because they actually match, like they've got that brown sidewall. We've got the uh, V Tire Co crown gem in the rear. And then we have this Terra Vale honcho uh, back at the end. So 27.5 by 2.6, 29 by 2.6. And 2.6 is sort of the narrowest of the plus size tires. It's gonna give you a little bit more air volume, a bigger surface area. It's gonna be a bit more forgiving. I actually ride uh, 2.8, so it's slightly wider. And then the largest of the plus size tires is 3.0. So this is really, it's kind of like walking that that line. You know, you got the mullet set up. And by the way, if you're unfamiliar, a mullet is like a haircut where you've kind of got business in the front and maybe you've got some bangs or it's, it's, it's kind of acceptable, socially acceptable. And in the rear, you have all this big hair and it's just like a party in the back. So that's where the name come from. You know, business up front, you can handle the big hits and then party in the back, a little bit more playful. And these tires, I mean, if you look at the knobs, they're a little bit more space and just really big, gnarly. They're going to grab and help you steer. And then in the back, the knobs are a little bit tighter. Maybe you'll have a bit more traction and surface area. It doesn't have to dig in as much as just touch the ground and propel you forward. I, I also feel like you get a, a bit more strength with the smaller wheel size in the rear and potentially a better mechanical advantage, especially when it comes to braking. And what you see here is actually Shimano. We've got three finger levers dual piston calipers and 180 millimeter rotors, but the brakes that the bike will actually come with are Tektro, and I double check this with Bulls, uh, you get 203 millimeter rotors, which is much better, especially for a heavier bike and these steep descents. It's gonna give you more surface area so it can cool a little bit more efficiently and a better mechanical advantage, especially over that really tall 29 inch front wheel with these big you know, 2.6 inch plus size tire. So I was really happy to hear that a lot of your weight shifts forwards when you brake. And if you're descending something steep, you really wanna have good braking power. This bike weighs 59 and a half pounds. As you see here, it comes in four frame sizes. We're on the medium. And a lot of that weight, it's actually the battery. It's like nine and a half pounds, but some of it is this suspension fork. So it's SR Suntour um, Lytro, a 35 millimeter steel stanchion. So these are not anodized aluminum alloy. They're definitely a little bit heavier. And then the compression adjustment, it's sort of like, you know, locked or open. It's not quite as fine tuned as something like from Fox, where you have like a couple of clickers. Down here we have rebound adjust. So that's kind of how quickly the bike rebounds. You don't want it to feel super bouncy, but this is boost hub spacing. So 110 millimeters up front with a 15 millimeter through axle, quick release setup. So it's really strong. That's excellent for those big hits. In the rear, we have boost hub spacing as well, 148 millimeters with a 12 millimeter through axle. And this one doesn't have quick release. It's got six millimeter like hex bolts there. Um, let's talk about the drive chain here. So we've got a 34 tooth steel chain ring with narrow wide teeth. So it's gonna grab that chain. It's not gonna drop it as easily. And we also have a plastic guide there. So that's excellent. It's, it's just gonna keep things on track when you're going over really rough terrain. You'll notice that the chain has been bouncing up and down a lot and hitting the chain stay in the rear and chipping the paint. It'd be nice if there was a clear sticker slap guard or some sort of neoprene wrap. This is a demo bike, so I'm not sure. Maybe it would come with that, but if it doesn't, you can always use a piece of clear box tape and just protect it yourself. Keep that paint looking good. 
The paint is sort of a, a matte black. It all kind of blends together nicely. And then the suspension fork has some stickers that match. So it's definitely purpose-built. All the wires and everything are internally routed through the frame. The weight is kept low and centered. And if we get back here to the cassette, it's a 10 speed, 11 to 46 tooth. Look at that huge 46 tooth sprocket in the rear. That's gonna help you get started and climb more easily. It gives you leverage. And then again, the smaller wheel might help. Uh, Shimano Dior with a one-way clutch, so this gray lever, you can click it up and sort of tighten the derailleur. You might not get the chain bounce or train drops quite as, as easily, but when it comes time to do service or maintenance, you can release it, and it's gonna make things a little bit easier to, to remove and work with. 165 millimeter crank arms, which is a bit shorter than normal. I'm used to seeing 170s, but that's gonna reduce pedal strikes. It complements the higher ground clearance that a mullet offers with that larger front wheel. So these plastic platform pedals that they kind of get the job done. And then the motor right there at the center. So this is the Bosch Performance Line CX motor. It offers up to 85 newton meters of torque, 120 RPM pedal support. So you can pedal really, really fast and you're still gonna get support, which means you don't have to shift gears in order to hit those higher top speeds. I'm a big fan of that because if you're going through technical terrain or you're racing or something, you don't have to think about you know, having the motor not keep up with you, this is exactly what you want. It works really well. It does produce a bit more noise and it's gonna drain the battery a bit faster, but you have a super high capacity battery pack here. So the motor is measuring your rear wheel speed, pedal cadence, and pedal torque over a thousand times per second, super dynamic. It even has shift detection. So as you shift gears, it's listening for pressure changes and it's trying to intuitively like ease off a little bit so that you're not stressing the chain and you know potentially bending the teeth on the sprockets the chain ring and everything um, in the rear you can actually see the magnet for the rear wheel speed sensor is is kind of connected to or built into the the mount for the disc brake rotor and that's just a lot nicer than having a little magnet on the spoke that can get bumped out of position and cause read errors. We do also have a kickstand mounting provision right here, which is very cool. If you get this bike and you're more of a casual rider and you're parking it in the garage or something, adding a kickstand can be a really nice thing. When you're out on the trail, of course, it's gonna be like clicking all around and bouncing up and down, but that's nice. I mean, they had the metal, they, they put threaded eyelets there for you so you can set it up the way you want. I'm a big fan of that. Bulls is a, is a German company and they're, they're sold worldwide, but all over Europe. And it's kind of a cooperative with the shops. They, my understanding is that they're trying to use parts and economies of scale that keep their bikes more affordable. And as we saw with the suspension fork, this isn't like top, top of the line hardware but they're offering something that's pretty unique and it's responding quickly to the popular trends and what people are, are wanting. I feel like they make some really cool decisions. They have this monkey link setup so that a little uh, reflector here is removable and it's magnetic. You can actually get like lights that connect right there. There's even like a rear fender with an integrated light. There's a magnetic water bottle. It's kind of expensive, but it would click right there. You can put your traditional bottle cage mount there too. If you want, you can remove the magnetic thing. And there's a headlight mounting provision. And the cool thing is those lights would run off the high capacity battery pack. So that's that's just really cool. There's also a, another mount up here for maybe your phone, or you could get the Bosch Kiox 300 if you wanna have a little bit more uh, feedback from the bike without having to use your phone. One of the other highlights on this bike is the key uh, locking core is way up high and it's on the drivetrain side of the bike. So if you lay this bike down, let's say you're riding on a trail, there's no kickstand, you do wanna lay it down on the disc brake side. You, you want the drivetrain, the delicate stuff, not being laid down into rocks and logs and stuff. So that's perfect. They, they've got the key slot there. You can take the battery off. And when it comes to charging, the charging port is also up high. I love that it's not down here. So many times the Bosch charging ports are right here and they're directly in the path of the crank arm and the pedals. This is up high. It feels like it's not gonna be exposed to dirt and mud and stuff. I wanna show you the charger real quick. This is the 1.6 pound Bosch standard charger, but it's it's smart system. Uh, and the reason I'm calling that out is the interface is different than the other standard charger from Bosch. But the, the stats are, they're kind of the same. It's, it's one of my favorite chargers, 36 volt, four amps. So you're getting really high amperage, uh, a little bit faster to refill your batteries, but it's not super big. It has a removable wall side so that they can do like European plugs and stuff. But that also makes it a bit more compact if you're storing it in a bag. At 1.6 pounds, it's really easy to, to take along with you and not get over encumbered. And then they're using the Abus 
uh, X plus code keys, which you can get keyed alike to folding locks and frame locks and, and such. I hear it can take a little while to get those ordered in if you're in North America, but it's still a really cool option. And these are just fancy keys to the way they're cut, maybe a little bit more secure. Uh, before we insert this and take the battery off, I wanna show you the plastic cover. There's a little switch down here. You kind of push up on that and then you can pull the cover off. It does not lock to the frame. So in terms of theft, uh, it'd be easy to kind of lose this. Still looks pretty good without it, but it's just, it's not secured by the lock. So I wanna call that out. And given that this is just kind of plain black, it does have some accents, but I feel like a replacement's gonna be a little bit more affordable. And we'll insert the key like this. When I turn it, you can see that it, it pops down to that first position. And now in order to get it off, I, act, I have to actually push another little switch here and that releases it the rest of the way. Nine and a half pounds on this, actually 9.4 pounds. So it's, it's pretty heavy duty, but they're using uh, very dense cells, high quality stuff. Uh, Bosch has really good warranties and they support their products for a long time. So I feel like you'd be able to get a replacement for this and it's gonna be reliable for, for many years, depending on how you use it. 36 volt, 20.1 amp hours for that 750 roughly watt hour capacity. We've got a little charge level indicator and the same plug as we saw on the left side of the bike. So you don't have any dongles or anything. It's the exact same plug. As long as you're using a smart system charger, it's gonna work. And I probably would take this off if I was loading the bike onto my, my car rack. I use a tray rack. I, I do wanna point out that with an all mountain bike like this, the fork angle, it's a little bit more raked out so you can take those big hits. Um, and the, with the longer travel and the, the bigger front wheel, we do have a longer uh, wheelbase on this bike. It did fit on my rack, but it was hanging off a little bit at the back and I have those measurements back at the site as well. Let's go ahead and test this thing. Yeah, see how full it is? They do a good job. And then just putting it back in the bike, we align that bottom portion like this. One of my complaints is that as you're putting it back in, you can't just push it back in. See, there's that square metal piece. You have to twist this, it's spring-loaded, and push the battery nine pounds, and then get it to click all the way in before you can remove the key. It's a bunch of junk this time, but I, I hope that made sense to you. I wish I could just go clink and it would click right on, especially given the weight and just you're coming from the bottom. It's a two-hand process um, and I wish I wish it was a little different, but maybe Bosch designed it that way to be extra secure. Okay, I flipped the bike around. We're gonna go over the display and as we work our way there, I wanna compliment the seat. It feels really nice and it's Bulls branded, of course, but it's actually Sully Royale. That's the manufacturer. It's got a little stamp on the bottom. So I thought that was kind of a, a nice little upgrade. The bike should have a dropper seat post from Limotech. Uh, unfortunately, the demo just came with a rigid post and I definitely noticed it when I was taking some of the steeper hills during my ride. The dropper post comes in a range of sizes depending on the frame size that you get, which I think is neat. And in the past, I've noticed their seat post droppers actually have a bit of suspension or a little bit of play just to kind of take the edge off if you hit something. And, and this bike has been set up for me by a City Cycles in Langley, British Columbia. So I wanna thank them, you know, both sent these bikes, they're demo bikes, they have been ridden. I'm trying to be as transparent and objective as possible when I do these reviews, this is a free review. Um, so, you know, back to the bike, locking grips, it's kind of a sculpted, not quite ergonomic, but it has the inner lock ring so they're not gonna twist on you. I'm a big fan of the Shimano Dior uh, shifters because you can go two ways. So you can use your pointer finger or your thumb. I tend to use my thumb more because I'm using my fingers to brake. And then we have multi-shift on the low gear so you can dump a bunch of gears. And with that shift detection from Bosch, it does pretty well. And that's important given how powerful this motor is. So to activate the bike, we come over here to the LED remote. There's a little power button on top. It comes to life, kind of cycles through this menu system here. Um, and this is giving you feedback about the charge level, which is great. So each block is representing a 20% step because there are five of them. But as they go out, it can go from blue to white and that's a half step. 
So you kind of get 10% increments. That's pretty good for an LED remote. This portion over here, it changes colors based on the assist level you're in. So even if you're way up here, you can't read it. You can kind of get a sense for like, oh, eco, you know, tour plus. And then we go to EMTB, which is this really dynamic mode where it's almost like a torque sensor. Like the harder you push, the more powerful it's going to be. But if you're if you're going easy, it's not going to give you it's not going to overpower you the way that turbo would. So at the highest level, there we go. It's red turbo mode. I'm, I'm a big fan of this. You got the plus, the minus. If you hold the, the minus for a second, you can get walk mode. If you hold the plus for a few seconds, you activate the lights, which could be really great if you have those monkey link uh, optional aftermarket lights built in. I, li I love that. I'm a big safety fan and maybe you're riding this bike to the trailhead and you want to have some lights uh, just right there on the bike and then you can take them off put them in your pocket it's a really great solution and then we have a select button and a left and a right but these don't really do a whole lot unless you have that optional Bosch Kiox 300 little color LCD display with a bunch more readouts. Now this does have Bluetooth, uh, BLE, Bluetooth Low Energy, and I think it also uh, can, can sync with heart rate monitors and, and other devices. I've got the app here, so I'm just gonna log into my phone for a second here. It's called the Flow app from Bosch. I've already pulled it up, so we can see that my ride is paused. It says, hey, Court, here's your precise battery charge level indicator in a percentage, 96%, 29 miles in turbo. That's my range. So it's giving me a pretty precise feedback based on the charge level and the level of assist that I've, I've got. And I think it measures based on just the last couple miles of riding, which is really cool. We can see that this bike has gone 102 miles and it breaks down how many of those miles are in each different level of assist. So turbo seems to be pretty popular, followed by EMTB when it comes to demo riders. It's a, it's a great app. I mean, you can go in here and do custom ride modes. We can't adjust EMTB or tour. tour. You remember I, I mentioned EMTB is this high-powered dynamic mode, sort of set it and forget it. And tour is like the more efficient dynamic mode where it just it's really based on how hard you're pedaling eco and turbo you can go in here and adjust you know how much power you're actually getting how dynamic it is so does it really kick in right away or is it more delayed what's your max speed this is a class one electric bike meaning you know it's pedal assist only up to uh, 25 kilometers per hour in europe 32 kilometers per hour in the united states that's roughly 20 miles per hour and here it actually says 19 miles per hour so bosch is being kind of conservative but it's nice that you could dial this down if you want to get a little bit more range or you just like going slower. You can dial in the torque. You can even update the, the firmware from here. You can go into settings and get a bunch of different information, get your ride stats. And then the map is really cool. You can see your routes. You can actually record and kind of replay the same trips and it can guide you. Uh, down here, we got our ride time, our distance, average speed, average cadence, that's cool. I'm always thinking about my cadence. And then you can actually go in here to this and say what kind of paths you wanna take. Like, are you okay with mountain riding? Or you want this sort of leisure neighborhoods and stuff? Or just straight to the point, just like direct as possible. You don't care if you're on a highway. That is so cool. I, you know, it's something that really sets Bosch apart. It, it didn't seem like they had this map uh, tool initially when I was looking at this app. And, and now I'm really impressed with it. So you can say from my current destination, find a, some sort of point of interest or a store and then you can go into ride screen so it's like oh be careful not to get distracted by the screen but you could mount this and you'd get real-time feedback about your distance your average speed so that that it, it almost replaces the need for the Kiox 300 you are gonna run down your phone uh, battery a little bit faster and I think that the hot sun and stuff you know it's maybe not ideal for your phone but that is really cool. It reminds me Bosch purchased like Kobe, sort of like a, a bike app system. And, and it basically did this, except it had its own little button pad and stuff. So now Bosch is taking those ideas and, and letting you do that with their new smart system. The one complaint to have about all of this is that I might want to charge my phone the same way that I'm, I've got lights and other accessories running off that main battery. They've, they've actually got a USB-C built into the bottom of the button pad, but it doesn't put power out to charge your phone. That's only for diagnostics, like at a dealer. I just, I feel it's right there. You know, you've got the port, 
but you can't really use the energy for your phone. And yet the phone might be your display. So it's like, I guess you get a backpack battery for your phone. There's ways around this. To me, it's just, I am seeing other companies letting you tap into the e-bike battery. So with that said, I'm gonna gather my things up and we'll take a little ride. You can hear that motor. And so I'm gonna start out in EMTB mode because it, it's a lot less easy to get carried away and have that motor just kick you. Um, I like that you can pedal backwards on this and they've got a little bit of a friction. You can kind of hear that buzz. Some systems actually cycle the chain. That is not the case here with uh, the Bosch Smart system. Just pedal along. Really gently. And then just immediately kicks in. Super responsive. One of my favorite systems, like hands down. It's, it's very powerful. It's dynamic. You got the shift detection, which really sets Bosch apart. The only downside is it does make more noise. So you could hear as I was shifting through the gears there, there's a little bit of clunking. It's definitely when you go to the higher gears, you hear it more. I think one way to, to avoid that is just ease off a little bit as you switch gears and that's gonna send a signal to the motor to back off too and then combine with the shift detection, you're just gonna cause less wear and strain on the, the drivetrain. Hey, thank you so much. No problem. Appreciate it. braking performance. I'm gonna go above 20 and this is set up so you really don't feel drag, you know, free of wheels frictionlessly. That's what they say. There's no reduction gearing or anything. Well guys, I had a whole lot of fun with this. The Bulls Copperhead Evo AM1 750. It's the mullet straight from the factory, four frame sizes, pretty high quality stuff here and a lot of upgrade potential coming back to the fork. That's the, the weak link in my opinion, in terms of weight and just adjustability. For the full written review on this, check out electricbikereview.com. There's a comparison tool so you can look at some other all mountain electric bikes. And you can also check in on the forums and see what accessories people are liking, get some feedback about bulls as a company. I have like a dealer map so you can see if there are bulls dealers nearby and you know get in touch with them, do some demos, some test rides. I love you guys. I hope you have fun out there, ride safe. And we'll see you next time.